Meet self-proclaimed punk Susan Lee. Susan has really been working on boosting her profile since taking on the role of Dutton's number two. Susan was the Federal Minister for the Environment from May 2019 through to May 2022. As the Federal Minister for the Environment, Susan was a big fan of fossil fuels and she voted consistently against a fast transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy. She also voted consistently against committing to achieving net zero emissions by 2050 as part of Australia's efforts to address climate change. Now Susan added a third S to her name based on a numerology theory she'd read about in the belief that it could change a person's personality. Perhaps that would explain why an environment minister would actively vote against action on climate change and instead allow some mining projects to bypass federal environmental approvals. Did I mention that as an environment minister, Susan took a liking to approving new coal mines? No one in the world is making an electric ute, by the way. Um... Look at this. This is an electric ute from LDV. Look at it. Here it is on a farm. <laughs> Can a truck change everything? No one in the world is making an electric ute, by the way. Susan likes to be photographed with fluffy animals. Although that's when she's not consigning other fluffy animals to extinction. Susan sat on the State of the Environment report for around six months, leaving it for the incoming government to share the bad news after the election. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. No, it didn't. Today, as part of my statutory duty as Minister, I am publicly releasing the 2021 State of the Environment Report. This report was delivered to the government last year. The previous Minister, Susan Lay, received it before Christmas but chose to keep it hidden, locked away until after the federal election. And when you read it, you'll know why. Susan found herself in a little bit of hot water a few years ago. Departmental documents revealing Ms Lee charged taxpayers more than $10,000 per day during a trip to the United States last February, including more than $40,000 in flights, $21,000 in ground transport and $11,000 in accommodation and meals, the total bill $76,133 for the seven-day trip or $10,876 per day. Compare that to Cabinet colleague Darren Chester, who stood alongside world leaders in Belgium for the last post ceremony at the Menin Gate. His total cost for the six-day trip, just over $10,700, less than the average day for Minister Lee. This is an unfolding crisis, almost a farce. Day by day, we get a clearer look at the cost of Susan Lee's love affair with the Gold Coast. It's increasingly likely to both finish her ministerial career... Five years later. I thank the Liberal Party room for the great honour of being elected Deputy Leader. Can I thank my electorate of Farah for returning me eight times to this federal parliament? 22 taxpayer-funded trips to the Gold Coast in three and a half years. Cost almost $65,000. She had claimed the apartment she bought during one trip was a last-minute decision. The purchase of this particular property was neither planned nor anticipated. But now this. Pictures of another Gold Coast property she apparently offered to buy nine months earlier while on another of those taxpayer-funded trips. Oh, my! Today I've received notice from the Honourable Susan Lee of her intention to resign as the Minister for Health, Ageing and Sport. Susan wasn't shy about running up an epic... Epic! Epic! ...epic phone bill either. Thankfully for her, in her new role, Susan's apparently able to take the moral high ground. Well, good afternoon. Uh, another day, another breach of the Prime Minister's code of conduct. This is an unfolding crisis, almost a farce. Speaking of... I'm in Lismore. I'm talking to real people no, in the real world. No, you're in Sydney. You're in Sydney. Really That's hurting. Sydney CBD. Be Did someone say KFC? Now, in opposition, Susan appears to have taken on the meme portfolio. Hmm. Looks like she's got a fair bit of work ahead of her. My message to the women of Australia is... We hear you. We heard you. And we are determined to earn back your trust and your faith. Really? She's a class act through and through. Susan is certainly worthy of being Dutton's number two. Yeah, that rhymes.